العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم Whatever was on the board beforehand, be honest, was it difficult? Be honest. Well, it should be difficult because it's the first time you studied it, to be honest. Lakin, the reason why you came here is to learn, sah? So, you came here to learn something new. So the fact that you find it difficult, that shows you're learning something new. If I was to write one add one equals two, two add two equals four, would you find it difficult? No, because you already know. Like you came in to study, you came in to seek knowledge. So anything that was on the board beforehand, if it was difficult, then it's understandable. Because it's the first time you studied it, or the first time you studied it. And there are, there's a lot of new terminology. So it's not that your understanding is weak, it's not that the way it's been taught is bad, but it can be bad, but what's more important than that is it is something that is new to you. It's something that is new to you and a lot of terminology, therefore, inshallah, it requires patience. And the reason why I did it in that order, one, two, three, because you wouldn't understand number four unless you've understood number three. You won't understand number three unless you've understood number four. And believe it or not, there was a number five and there was a number six that were also coming as well. Inshallah, we'll study that in the next class. But what I want from you now is to revise what was on the board. I will write it up, inshallah, and I'll also write the English explanation of it or the translation for it. And I will send it to you. But someone has to remind me. Right. Now we're going back to Usul al -Fiqh. The kitab that we studied, Usul al -Fiqh. I'll ask you the questions in a minute. Back in. The lesson today is on what we've started. Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah is now defining, he's given the ta'rif for Usul al -Fiqh. However, Usul al -Fiqh, because it consists of two words, because it consists of Usul, and because it consists of al-fiqh, we need to first understand what usul means and then what fiqh means and then thirdly we can understand what usul al-fiqh means. Taib. So for example, if someone was to say this, I, or Abdullah, you need to know Abdullah uh, abd, you need to know Abd, the meaning of Abd, and Allah in order to understand Abdullah. So for example, if someone says to you, what's your name? Abdullah, what's the meaning of Abdullah? If you say to the servant of Allah, they'll be confused. But if you say Abd means servant, Allah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I am the Abd, the servant of Allah, Jalla they'll understand it a lot better. So this is what the Sheikh is going to explain. And any tarqib like this, mudaf mudaf ilayhi that you see, always has two different types of definitions. Where have we studied that before? Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyya Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyya Right. What did we define first? Al-Qawaid Qaida, what is the meaning of Qaida? Fiqh, what is the meaning of Fiqh? Then, what is the meaning of Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyya? Is that understood? So the Shaykh, inshallah, today we're going to understand Usul on its own, fiqh on its own, because of the word in the mufradat, the word in usul and the word usul, fiqh. Then we're going to learn what usul al fiqh means as a science. What it means as a science. Is that understood? طيب. You can only say knowledge is hard or a certain subject is hard when you've studied it a few times and you don't understand it. But if you studied it once and twice, once or twice, then you can't say it is difficult. Shadu Hank, it's falling off. Is that I don't have time for questions, Lakin. I am, it is, it is boiling, Lakin. Right. Um, yeah, please, if possible, yeah. Taib. قال الشيخ محمد صالح العثيمين رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة أصول الفقه 
تعريفه أصول الفقه يعرف باعتبارين أصول الفقه is given تعريف or defined باعتبارين from two different angles one angle is here and the other angle is what? over there الأول the first definition or the first angle that we want to define أصول الفقه from is باعتبار مفرديه when we're looking at the two words concerning it the two words that it consists of as words and the two words that it consists of is what? Usul and fiqh Usul and fiqh Ay bi'atibari kalimati usul wa bi'atibari kalimat al fiqh Is that understood? Taib Fal aslu or fal usulu as for usul because the first word is usul Jam'u asal It is the plural of asal It is the plural of asal وهو أن لا أصل ما يبنى عليه غيره ما يبنى عليه غيره and the أصل is that which you can build something else upon that which you build something else upon so a house as the sheikh says ومن ذلك أصل الجدران and from that is the أصل of the wall وهو أساسه it is its base وأصل الشجرة and the asal or the root or the base of the tree الَّذِي يَتَفَرَّعُ مِنْهُ أَغْصَانُهَا That which sprouts from it and comes out from it, its branches قال الله تعالى أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ أَصْلُهَا أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Allah Jalla wa Ala presents an example. Do you not see the example of a good word, which is similar to يعني كلمة طيبة لا إله إلا الله كشجرة which is similar to a شجرة that is good a شجرة طيبة that is good أصلها ثابت its roots is firmly placed on the floor وفرعها and its branches go out to the skies its branches go out to the skies. Asal is that which you build other things on top of it. طيب. The house has an asal. What is the asal of a house? The foundation. The foundation. طيب. That can be abstract or it can be something that you can, that is tangible. So for example, al asal, asl al ibn abu. يعني the أصل of a child is his what your أصول are your parents your أصول are your parents so it has different meanings as for أصل we'll look in إن شاء الله the second time that we're studying this كتاب we're going to look at the meanings that أصول has لكن for now take it as it is a foundation of something it is a foundation it is a foundation for something والفقه as for fiqh, which is the second word, so what is a foundation? What is asal? Ma yubna alayhi ghayruhu. That which you build something upon. Wal fiqh and fiqh lughatan, linguistically, is al faham. Al faham, understanding. So fiqh, this second word that has the two red lines under it, it means fiqh. To understand. ومنه قوله تعالى like Allah جل وعلا says in سورة طه وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. When Musa عليه السلام was sent to فرعون, Musa had a he had like a lisp on his tongue. So he said untie oh Allah وحل العقدة من لساني oh Allah untie the knot. From my tongue. Why? Why? يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ أَيْ لِيَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ So, they understand what I am saying. مَا نَفْقَهُ كَثِيرٌ مِمَّا تَقُولُ صح? يا شعيب ما نفقه We do not understand much of what you are saying. And likewise you can say فَقِهْتُ الْمَسْأَلَةِ I understood the مسألة. طيب. لغة what is fiqh? الفهم. What is asal? 
that the foundations of something very simple wastilahan and istilahan طيب istilahan requires that we write it down this part uh, this part that the sheikh is now going into the fiqh or the meaning of fiqh he's going to explain it he's going to explain al fiqh what is ma'rifatul ahkam ma'rifatul ahkam al shar'iyya al amaliyya bi adillatiha tafsiliya aw min adillatiha tafsiliya bi adillatiha sah bi adillatiha at tafsiliya correct sah on ma'rifatul ahkam al shar'iyya ma'rifatul ahkam al shar'iyya al amaliyya bi adillatiha tafsiliya that is the definition of what? Fiqh. Uh, Abdullah, read the, read the mutton for me. The Shaykh is now, the Shaykh is now defining Al Fiqh. We've understood what Usul means, and we've understood. In the terminology of the Fuqaha, we want to know an Usulim, we want to know what Fiqh is. After we learn what Fiqh is, then we can go on to Usul Al Fiqh as a science. معي؟ طيب ريد اه عبد الله في المراد بقول معرفه لحظه لحظه معرفه آه الاحكام الشرعيه is one العمليه is one بادلتها التفصيليه طيب 1 2 3 4 so he should explain رحمه الله four things in this تعريف كون في المراد بقول معرفه العلم والظن طيب. طيب. So ma'rifa, what he means by ma'rifa is knowing. Knowing. That knowing can be dhan, speculation, conjecture as they call it, speculation, or yaqeen. Or yaqeen. For example, what is the ruling of as salah? Wajib. Is that dhanni do you think of? Is there a ghalib or is it yaqeen? Yaqeen. What is the hukum of zakah? Wajib. Is it yaqeen or dhanni? Yaqeen. Yaqeen. When you break your wudu, if you eat camel's meat, it breaks your wudu. Is that dhanni, yani speculation or strong speculation based on evidence of opinion? Or is it qat'i, yaqeeni? Dhanni. So both of these two issues come into al ma'rifa whether you know it 100% yaqeeni or whether it's ghalib yani dhannu rajih for example what is the ruling on ghusl yawm al jum'ah wajib yaqeeni or even if you say it is sunnah or if you say it is wajib is that knowing is it yaqeeni or is it ghalabatu dhann yani yaqeeni or ghalabatu dhann ha Otherwise, if there was yaqeen, there would be no khilaf in it. How many scholars have you heard differing over whether salah is wajib or not? How many scholars have you heard differ over whether zakah is wajib or not? La, none. So it's yaqeeni. Like in dhanni, is that which there's khilaf over? There's tatakafa ul adilla. There's adilla on here, on this side, and there's adilla evidence on this side. Okay? So that is ma'rifa. Carry on. Yes. So that's the first one we understood. What does it mean, ma'rifa? Ilm, knowing something by way of yaqeen or knowing something by way of na'am, spong speculation. This is the second one that the Sheikh is now going to explain. Al ahkam al shari'iyya. It's like we're saying to him, Ya Sheikh ibn Uthaymin rahimakallah, what do you mean by ahkam al shari'iyya? What do you mean ahkam al shari'iyya? Yani? Carry on. خرج به الاحكام العقليه كمعرفه ان ان 
كل أكبر من الجزء والأحكام العادية لمعرفة نزول الظل في الليلة الشاكية امتلا نجوم صحون إن كان السماء صحون طيب تحسي إيه صح طيب the meaning of أحكام الشرعية when you're saying fiqh it means those أحكام those rulings that are connected to the Sharia, that we've learned through the Sharia, that we have learned through the Sharia. For, for example, Salah is wajib, Zakah is wajib, the Nisab or the threshold for Zakah, gold, is 85 grams, Salatul Jama'ah is wajib, uh, Wudu is wajib, and so on. These are Ahkam, where do we find them? In the Quran and the, and the Sunnah. Ahkam Aqliya. What does that mean? For example, now the fact that that this chair is smaller than this room. Yes or no? Lakin, do we look into the Quran and the Sunnah to find out that this chair is smaller than this room? La. We look into where? Aql, common sense. Taib. Mathalan, al adiya al ahkam al adiya al ahkam that we come to know of the norm. For example, if you see clouds, it's more likely going to rain. If it's bright and sunny, blue skies, and the sun is out, then it is more likely not going to rain. A father is older than his child. A father is older than his son. Do we get to know that through the Sharia? So in order to know that a father is older than his son, we need to find a verse or a hadith. Or is it ahkam adiyya, tabi'iyya? Adiya is normal. For example, the fact that fire burns. Fire burns. Sah? Fire does burn. Sah? Mm-hmm. Have we come to know that fire burns through a, a, a hukum shari'i, yani through a verse or hadith? La. Where do we know that from? His aql. Taib. Is that understood? What the Sheikh means by ahkam shari'iya? Sah? Taib. Abdullah, continue. Allah. <laughs> طيب فقه فقه in in the اصطلاح أو عفوا عملية what the sheikh means by عملية is the actions that the Muslim does صلاة زكاة وضوء حج صيام and all of the acts that are connected with fiqh, nikah, talaq, khul, and so on, bay'ah. That is what he means by amaliyah. What does it exclude? Don't forget, every time we go through a word, this is a definition. And in a sort of fiqh, it's important that we pay attention to the definitions. Because when you write a definition and you mention it, it excludes things, meaning this can't be included. Like ahkam shari'iyah, what did we exclude? The ahkam, the rulings that we come to know by way of aql and ada. So we take away the adat, yani the fact that uh, your leg is smaller than your whole body, or the chair is smaller than, or this room is smaller than the whole building. That takes that out. Is that understood? Al amaliyah, it has to take something out as well because it's a definition. Yahuju bihada, they they say. What does what does this take out? Okay, actions that are not from the Quran Sunnah. Okay, kind of. Aqidah. Takes away aqidah. So fiqh in the terminology of the fuqaha is different to aqidah. So for example, if I said to you now, don't think too much into it. If I said to you guys, we're gonna learn fiqh. Bring your books. And then I say, to, and I bring out Usul al Thalatha. What's the first thing you're going to say to me? Ustad, you said you were going to teach us fiqh. The book that I've picked up is what? Aqeedah. So that amaliyah, that word, takes out anything to do with i'tiqad. Anything to do with i'tiqad can't be called fiqh according to the terminology of who? The fuqaha. Lakin in the Sharia, it can be included. It is included, Baba. Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi din. Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him understanding of 
the religion. Is that understanding specifically just Salah, Zakah, Hajj and Manajah Salikin? La, a general understanding. So when we say fiqh in the Quran and the Sunnah, or when we hear fiqh in the Quran and the Sunnah, then it means aqeedah, tafsir, fiqh that we know, hadith and so on. Is that understood? Amaliyah, what does it take out? al i'tiqad. Ahkam al i'tiqad are studied in the books of aqeedah, not in the books of fiqh. That's يعني, relative, nisbi, because if a person doesn't believe salah is wajib, then it can take him outside of the fold of Islam. Sah? Like in the i'tiqad that we're referring to is the i'tiqad to do with the aqeedah of the Muslim, the subject that is aqeedah. Taib, carry on. طيب. What is the fourth one that we now want to know or we un- want to understand what it means? بأدلتها التفصيلية With specific evidences Write this down There are two things when it comes to evidence There's, These are two words that we're going to need to understand it now We're going to need it even for usul al-fiqh The da'ak ta'rif Al-dalil al-ijmali that's the general dalil. It doesn't deal with a specific situation. For example, the Quran, the Sunnah, Ijma'. Is Quran a dalil for anything spe- specific? Is the Sunnah dalil for anything specific? So I say to you, the Sunnah is a hujjah or the Sunnah is a proof. Have I mentioned anything specific? What it's approved for? La. Ijma, have I mentioned what it's approved for? La, I've just said the ijma is hujja. The same goes for al qiyas. This is called adilla ijmaliya, general evidences. This is the job of usul al fiqh. Adilla ijmaliya. This adilla al ijmaliya is Al-Qur'an, Sunnah, Ijma', the statement of the Sahabi, general evidences. I haven't talked about anything specific. But when I say a dalil tafsili a dalil which is specific, what does that mean? مثلاً, أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer. Aqeemu Salah. I want to know what the ruling of Salah is. So I say to you, uh, Abdullah, tell me, what is the ruling of Salah? And you say to me, it is wajib because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa aqimu Salah. Allah says, establish the prayer. That is a dalil that is tafsili, it is a specific dalil. Or, I say to you, what is the ruling on zakah, مثلاً? And you say to me, it is wajib. Because the Messenger, وسلم, said, Bunya al-Islam ala khams, Islam is built upon five, and from them, we take zakah, and pain the zakah. So here, I've talked about the salah, and I've mentioned the, del- or the delil for the salah, and I've mentioned the delil for zakah, and then as-siyam, or as-siyam, the dalil for siyam, I say, kutiba alaykum siyam, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, and I mention this dalil for siyam, that is called dalilun tafsili. So now I'm mentioning every evidence with its book, every evidence with its ruling, ayah, hadith, and so on. Mathalan, what is the hadith that we took in, the last hadith that we studied, hadith ubadah, sah? الذهب بالذهب والفضة بالفضة صح؟ So you say to me, يا أستاذ, what is the ruling of riba on ذهب? And I say to you, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الذهب بالذهب والفضة بالفضة إلى حديث صح؟ طيب, that is دليل, that is تفصيلي Is that understood? The usuli, so in this book that we're studying now we're not going to look at what is the evidence for salah we're not going to look at what the evidence for zakah is in usul al-fiqh, we're not going to look at the evidence for siyam 
unless we're using it as a proof for something else, as an example. If we're using it as an example, that's different. But we're going to look at the Qur'an. How is it a hujjah? Nasr. If something has been abrogated, if an ayah has been abrogated, how do we know what abrogated it? The sunnah. Is it a hujjah? Is it not a hujjah? The hadith, is it a hujjah? Yani proof. Is it the hadith that are mutawatik, that have come in many chains of narrations? Are they hujjah? The hadith that are ahad, that have come with one chain of narration? Is it a hujjah? Ijma'ah. Consensus of who? Is it consensus of the scholars, the consensus of the awam, uh, the general common folk, or the consensus of the majaneen, the crazy people? Whose ijma' is a hujjah? Al qiyas, is it a hujjah or not? That is what the usuli will talk about. That is what the usuli deals with. 